again. Um, this is the next one in our series about off-grid living. And um, if you're, you know, you're using a shed for your off-grid living and you might want an electricity supply in there. No, fair enough, it's maybe possible to run a cable to that, but an alternative would be using a system based on these boys, solar panels. So this video, we're going to show you how you can set up a system based on a solar system for your electricity supply needs. Okay, all right, um, so I'll start off with the solar panels themselves. We've actually bought this as part of a kit. Um, which makes life easier when you know, when the installation of this stuff's got to be done. So we've got a kit based on three um, solar panels, 250 watts, so they'll produce a total of 750 watts. Um, and they'll work, you know, they work really well in sunshine, but they work quite well on a cloudy day as well. You'll get output from them all the time. And what they basically do is charge a set of batteries and then we process the voltage from the batteries to turn that into something usable for ordinary domestic uh, equipment, okay, such as lights and, and computer chargers and things like that. Okay, so those are the panels which we mounted up here. Um, we've got the cables running across and I'll, I'll go inside now and show you what we've done inside to make the thing work. At the moment, as you can see, the cables are all exposed here. Uh, we've done that so you can see where we've run the cables across. Um, these will eventually be buried in the ground or you can suspend them overhead. We're, it's better for us to bury them so we will do that eventually so the cables are not left out in the open. Okay, now we've come inside and we'll show you the setup inside. Obviously the solar panels are outside because that's where the sun is. Um, but the solar panels, the energy that they make is stored in this system in a couple of very large batteries. Um, these are special batteries, um, what they call deep discharge batteries, um, because they work better on a system like this. In fact, ordinary car batteries will do it, but not quite as well as these things will do. You cannot plug solar panels straight into the batteries. So you need another piece of equipment to manage the flow of electricity to charge these batteries properly. And that is in here. And this marvelous little blue box actually manages the whole system for you. So this is one of the reasons that we've chosen to go for a, um, uh, an off the shelf kit is because we don't have to source and manage and plug in all kinds of different bits and pieces that we have to fiddle about with to get it to work properly. This does the whole thing in one hit. Okay, um, this little blue box, which is the clever bit of the whole system. Uh, you buy a kit with this, but um, we've actually put a few extras into the kit as well. I'll explain what these are as I go along. Essentially, everything actually runs through this box. The solar panels plug in here, positives and negatives. And as you see, we've got room for three sets of solar panels, which we've got out here. These are the cables that go to the batteries. And in behind that, we've got mains electricity cables. Um, which is what this box does. It turns the voltage of the battery into 230 volts mains and that runs out to the rest of the system that we've got wired up in the shed. Um, plainly there's going to be limits to how much um, a, a box like this can do and you really need to think about very carefully what sort of equipment you want to run in your shed before you go buying a box because obviously you know, different boxes will, will handle different amounts of power. We've also got on our system an isolator switch for the batteries. Now, I would recommend putting one of these in because otherwise your battery is permanently connected to the box. And if you ever need to switch the battery off for any reason, it's very good to have one of those in there. It costs about 40, 45 pounds for that and I, th I think it's well worth the money to be able to switch the system off. We've also got a little battery monitoring system here 
which will tell you how much power you're using, what the voltages are on the batteries and all the rest of that. Again, well worth having because you can see what's going on on your system. Again, this is, here's the front end of the isolator switch. It's just a, it's just a big isolator switch. It'll handle quite large amounts of current. The batteries can, I mean, typically whack up 100 amps only at 12 volts but it's you know that's quite a lot of current so you need a fairly big thing to switch this switch currents like that on and off if needs be and the monitor well we've got it sitting in a box here it's a little electronic device you can select different functions you can see for example i can see the battery voltage here if i press it i can select the type of um, discharge that i'm looking at uh, I can see how many um, how many amps I've drawn out of the battery. I can see what's left in the battery. All of this can be read from this little monitor. Um, there is even a device where you can do that remotely. We we haven't set this one up because it's only on here. Right, a couple of other points. Um, you notice we've got the batteries in this wooden box, which is nice. You know we haven't got them on display. You want to cover the terminals up ideally anyway. Um, because although it's only low voltage there's a lot of power stored in here these batteries do produce a certain amount of gas a certain amount of hydrogen um, and so in the back of this box I've actually drilled vent holes they allow the cables to come through as well um, and I've drilled some holes out through the wall as well because obviously hydrogen's a, a, a quite an explosive gas and we like to vent that out through the wall um, as quickly as it's produced so you do need to make sure this is properly vented they shouldn't be put anywhere underneath the other unit the, the blue box obviously with a system like this um, it does produce mains voltage uh, if you're a qualified electrician then no problem at all because you can wire a system up like this and you know you can do the lesser necessary certificates and all the rest of it but you know to be honest even if you're not uh, if you're a reasonably competent diy person there's nothing in there really that you would find particularly frightening or difficult to do um, but technically this does need to be signed off under bs 7671 because it is mains voltage because it, you know it, it comes under the regulations um, just a, one other thing about the batteries again um, particular care needs to be taken when you're doing the battery terminals you don't want to short these things out um, I use uh, special spanners that are that have a particular type of insulation on them if you haven't got anything like that you can tape a spanner up i mean this happens to be an adjustable but you can tape an ordinary spanner up if you were to touch this across the battery terminals uh, it could weld across there and then discharge through the spanner and believe me you don't want to be standing next to that if that happens so a bit of care needs to be taken with the batteries but as i say Nothing that a competent DIY person can't handle themselves, no problem. This has been Off Grid Living with Lindsay, number three, how to install a solar system. <laughs>